Good morning, y'all. It's been a hectic morning already. Raced and raced and got to the train station just in time for our train to take us down south to Gaul. The itinerary today, we're gonna enjoy that train ride, get to Gaul, and then walk around the fort. This Max and my kind of beats. Let's get it started. <laughs> Got on here just in time. Got Galoom here. You ready for today? Yeah. All right. Let's do it, y'all. Guy was coming through. We had to grab a little snack. Got a little iso bidet which is actually going to be the doll fried up with a little shrimp in the middle. We got some chilies in here too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I'm starting with a little chili though. Then you go in. Then you got to finish off a little refreshing onion. That's just the ultimate combination right there. You get the heat from the chili. You get the fried, greasy, crunchy, fried up salt. And then you get the frog. It gives you that little bit of sweetness. That onion just kind of cleanses everything out. And we got the normal body as well. The normal ones are nice, but I love the prawn ones. <laughs> Snack number two today, we got the chickpeas here. You see they come with the coconut and a little chili. <laughs> Key to this is you gotta make sure you get the chili, the coconut, and the chickpeas all in one bite. Who's better at it than I am? Me, I'm like, a little bit of heat. You're a pro. Go down. Those are the people that it's spicy. It's sweet. It's on one side. Like also the chickpeas. A dried chickpea. We straight up made the mistake, did not eat breakfast, so we were starving on this train ride. We got some dried out chickpeas and some peanuts just to snack on again. I think I just broke a tooth on those. Those are so crunchy. You know the corn pops, like the fried up corn, they're really hard and chewy. Yeah, well those make those seem soft. Oh. This one. He can have those. He can have the dried out chickpeas. I'm just gonna snack on these. I'll tell you what make these peanuts better. A little salt and a little lion beer to wash them down with. See, he said he likes them, but he can't even finish them. <laughs> Attention, please welcome to Go Railway Station, the express train number one platform. We leave for Matara in a few minutes. All right, we have done it. We have made it to go. I think we're about to check into the Airbnb and grab some lunch. So we'll catch y'all at lunch. Okay, we're here for lunch. Let's get in here. Ooh, I didn't know this. This could be dangerous. I think we're on for a buffet. Oh yeah. This. Sorry. Oh yeah, dog. All right, definitely gonna start with the soup. Just get the appetite going. Like I said, those snacks and that train ride just got my appetite started. I think that's a third degree burn though. Nice, subtle, got a nice little chicken flavor to it. Lots of black pepper. Just a little something to kind of wake up the appetite. But now I've got to go for this plate. I think my eyes are bigger than my stomach maybe, guys. I'm not wasting any time. I'm diving straight into where that double curry is. Hmm. 
Let's go ahead and get this mixed in better. It's just fantastic fresh fish, nice, meaty, lean. I can't get over how naturally sweet it is. Get some of that green graham chutney with it. I can tell it's super sweet just by how sticky it is working with it. Big kick of sweetness with that. That cooked down pineapple, the cooked down onions, a little bit more sugar, and just a few chili flakes. It's got big kick of sweetness, so you gotta make sure you get lots of rice, lots of dal, and lots of fish curry to go with it. Yo, I'm done messing around with this. I'm about to get it at its best, because that dal curry, that chutney, and those curries all mixed together. Mm. I like to think curry rice is a little symbolism of life. You know, if we'd all come together, we'd work together, we'd be at our best as well. Couldn't say no to some ice cream and fruit to finish it off. It's no carnival for Palumbo, but I tell you what, it hits the spot on this hot Sri Lankan day. That was really interesting to eat for me. I didn't say anything while I was in there, but there's a lot of Chinese tourists, and even the food had more of like a Chinese little taste to it, just from the slurry of the curries to some of the flavors. So that was a really cool little Chinese Sri Lankan curry rice fusion meal. Plan is simple now, we didn't check into the Airbnb. We were too hungry, so we're gonna go do that now and rest, and then check out the fort later tonight. We're gonna meet you there. So Bon's trying to uh, parallel park, not working so well. <laughs> I actually don't know what we're gonna do. I gotta talk to Kay Loom. I'm sure we're gonna just check out the beautiful view, and a lot of snacks usually come out as the sun starts to go down, so I'm sure we'll snack on a few things as well. Ah, my boy got it. That boy Supon. Got that lighthouse right here. It's actually constructed by the British in 1938. Now, the actual Dutch fort was first built by the Portuguese. You know, they built the fort to kind of put them away from the Sri Lanka because they were afraid the kings were going to attack. But then what happened is the Dutch came on the other side and took over. You can see today this is just a fun little place to play, but this used to be a very important port until about the 20th century, until where the main port kind of moved to Colombo, but you can see this port being talked about a lot in a lot of older scripts. And then right over here, we actually have Drop Island, which actually has a funny story that goes along with it as well. So we were actually on a bastion here on the water, and it was actually built by the Dutch. One way you can tell is because when the Portuguese ruled here, they built three bastions, but they never built one on the water. They only built on land, so they only protected against land, and then the Dutch came and attacked them from the sea, and eventually ended up winning. Now there are a total of 12, and as you can tell, this is a very popular one here at sunset. Even though it's later in the day, it came to the market just because we're only here for tonight. I want to check it out. Looks like we're going to check out some of the produce and hopefully check out the fish market as well. Check out these bananas right here. They're actually red. Apparently they're really expensive but delicious. Sri Lanka in total has a total of 22 varieties of bananas. Never had a red banana before. Cannot pass up the opportunity on this. That tastes so nutritional, y'all. I mean, you can just taste the vitamins and minerals in this. It's so flavorful, really creamy, and then just a kick and touch of sour and sweet. This red banana for the win, though. An Indian gooseberry. They also bought me an Indian gooseberry. Supposed to have five tastes to it. Let's see if we can get them all. Definitely sour. Whoa, bitter. Really bitter. Oh my gosh. A little salty. Not really sweet. I didn't get five. And that just sucks the moisture out of your mouth. Indian gooseberry, not for me. Apparently it's medicinal, good for the hair. 
I'm glad I don't need it because I do not like that taste. Okay, so it got late night and starting to rain on us, so we're actually just gonna get the perfect late night eat. Some coke too. All right, had one vegetable mixture going in with lots of herbs and stuff, threw a little oil, got that going, hit it with a couple cracks of eggs and a little more veggies, and a big kick of spice. We told me we want that Sri Lankan spicy. Always nice and hot back there in the kitchen. I don't know how they do it, y'all. <laughs> okay, key factors to coat too. I feel like it's gotta be late night and it needs to be sauced up and portions need to be able to feed at least four or five people. This isn't as saucy and creamy as the ones I've had at Pilau's, but I tell you what, they big, big kick of pepper in there. Nice, spicy, ton of fresh herbs in there. This one's a lot lighter tasting. I'm all about this though. I mean, if there's one thing that's better than no koto, it's definitely having some koto. The chicken they threw in there is nice and lean. Like I say, it's got a lot of red chili flake in there. And then one thing I like about this, it reminds me more of like a fried rice kind of the way he's really got those actual roti in small pieces. And definitely one of the beverages of choice you want are a nice Coca-Cola. That big a kick of sugar just wipes out your palate, gets that spice off your tongue, and gets you ready to go right back in there. And that is a wrap. Started getting poured on. So back here at the hotel. I do want to say that Koto is nice, but it's not near as good as my Pilaos. Pilaos? Pilaos? I, I can't think of the name. But anyways, it's not as good as the Koto I had in my earlier videos, but I'm saying that one's still number one for me. Anyways, a cool day. Got the train ride. Got lots of snacks. Got a good meal. Got to see the Dutch Fort. Got a little bit of a Gaul City tour. Did a little bit of everything today, but got another long big day tomorrow. Got to wake up early, so I'm about to work a little bit and pass out. Y'all, it's been Max and my kind of beats. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you tomorrow.